Good afternoon and welcome to Talks at Presents Drunk Shakespeare. Yes. That is. We are very excited to have this show here. Um, this is an amazing production, um, a self-professed uh, drinking club with a Shakespeare problem. Um, they have come today to, uh, to perform and wow you all, and, and especially on Take Your Parents to Work Day. How many parents? It's a dark room, by applause. There we go. But you're all very polite, I liked that. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Phones, laptops, um, if you have a Zoom, anything that makes noise, if you could turn it off, um, silence it. And rather than have me explain everything, um, we will welcome the cast for Dunk, Drunk Shakespeare to the stage. I'm going to turn this over right now so that you can, uh, we can set what's about to happen for you to uh, the very talented, the very lovely future Tony Award winner, Mike Saus. The future Tony Award winner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Romans, people who think an iPhone X is just a fancy, expensive Samsung Galaxy, <laughs> lend me your ears. We are the Drunk Shakespeare Society, and it is an honor to be here with you today. There are some of the most brilliant minds in all of the world in this building, and then there's also people that thought Google Plus was really going to take off. <laughs> we are the Drunk Shakespeare Society, and we gather every night in a hidden library on 43rd and 8th to pay homage to the swan of Avon, the brilliant bard, the eloquent Elizabethan, of course, I'm talking of William Shakespeare! Uh, yes. Good man, good yeah. man. Reach, baby. Now, folks, what makes us different than your average run-of-the-mill, stick-up-your-ass Shakespeare company is that we have found that Shakespeare, his poetry was for everybody, not just the well-to-do academics watching from above, but also these inebriated groundlings, these belligerent folk who gave their day's wage to laugh at a well-penned dick joke. Thank you for coming, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have been asked today to curate a special brief and boozy rendition of Shakespeare's star-crossed lovers. And we are going to celebrate the only way we know how, by having one of our very own society members give in to the muse, release their performance to the spirits. That's just a fancy way of saying we're going to get someone hammered and throw them into a Shakespeare play. So, your drunk actor today, drum roll please. Get it, come and get it. Give it up for your drunk actor, Caitlin Morris. What? 2.30 on a Friday! <laughs> what is my life? Uh, yeah. Where are my people at? <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, good. Hands in the air. Yeah, good. Now, Thank you, sir. Folks, Thank you. That one he was guy. ready. Caitlin <laughs> has been day drinking like it's Sunday brunch in Williamsburg. Basic. And we're going to add a little bit more spice to her life in the form of bullet bourbon. We have six shots of bullet right now. Four of them are going to Caitlin, but two of them are for two very lucky audience members to prove to you this is real alcohol she's about to get drank on, mm -hmm. okay? Now, we understand this is uh, bring your parents to work day because most of you are millennials and you won't have children till you're 50. <laughs> so, could I please have uh, a volunteer with their parent to come drink? Any, would, who, who would like to come drink? A shot with their parents. Come, come on, what's better than family bonding? Oh, no, we saw you in the back. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Here we go. Here we go. Come on up. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, get up here. <laughs> yeah, take your time. We don't have all day. Don't worry about it. It's good. Oh, my oh. God. Did mom initiate that? Ooh, well, mom, mom was yeah. the one that yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. Yeah, watch your step, my dear. What's your name? Elise. Elise and? Nick. Nick. Elise and Nick. Give it up oh. for Elise and yeah, Nick. Yes, snaps. Snaps. So, can you tell us what your son does? No. <laughs> Go ahead. Any, any shot, shot you want. Take anyone you'd like. Not that one. <laughs> oh. Okay. Ambit. All right. Um, so, this is to you guys. Thank you for loving alcohol as much as I do. And I hope you got all your projects done this morning. Cheers to you. Thank you. <laughs> now, is that real alcohol? I like, oh, how, I like how mom's a sipper and the son's just like, let's just do this. <laughs> good. You can savor that. Just take it back to your seat. You're yeah, good. take him. You're Give awesome. it up. Thank oh, you. Lisa everybody. Nick. Lisa Nick. You know what they say? A family that drinks together stays together. Or fights a lot on Thanksgiving. Hashtag <laughs> Christmas. Okay. <laughs> this next shot 
Well, you know, I would like to raise a glass to all the amazing work that you guys do here. It really is like incredibly shiny and perfect. And <laughs> um, specifically, I want to give a shout out to whoever created the algorithm that ensures that every time I type my name into Google search, a picture of me in the ensemble of Kiss Me Kate from high school comes up. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh my god. OK. Oh, sorry. That was a little burp. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this next shot, I would like to dedicate to Funfetti Cupcakes. <laughs> They're the best of the, all the cupcakes. Great They're my favorite. The really Thank great. you so much. Thank you. Um, since I do have this platform, <laughs> I would like to take a moment to discuss politics. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I just want to thank you guys for coming out. I know this is like a really random thing to be doing um, in the middle of your work day with your parents. <laughs> but imagine how much weirder it is for me, you know? <laughs> um, thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do to support Warby Parker. Um, <laughs> there's some amazing eyewear in the audience. There's really good um, frames. Yeah. I, I hope you guys have fun and TGIF. Let's go. Give it up for Caitlin. She's four shots in, everybody. Yeah. And um, now we're going to let that uh, settle inside of Caitlin it's for a little bit. It's jumping around inside me right <laughs> and, now. And uh, we're going to turn it over to a moderated uh, Q&A with our uh, moderator, Mr. Henry Faulkner, and Ooh. our creative team, our uh, producer, Scott Griffin, our director, David Hudson, and our resident director, Lisa Clagus. Yeah. Clagus. Yeah. Clagus. <sighs> Hey, how's it going? All right, thank you guys for coming out. Yeah. For Ireland. Me. Cool shirt, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so David and Scott, as the, as the creators of this show, let's, let's go back first to the history. How long has this show been running? Sure, so. There's a little uh, switch on the side. <laughs> we don't work in tech, so we need no. help. <laughs> how's we, that? We barely go. So uh, the show's been going for about three and a half years. Um, We've done almost 1,400 performances, and um, one of the three performers you're seeing today has been with us since the very beginning, and you can try and guess uh, who that is, uh, <laughs> someone who's done almost 800 shows. God help um, <laughs> You can uh, 20 play spets. 20% of those have been drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, More than uh, you know, but that's fair. <laughs> Do you want to hear about the beginning I, of the show? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, where, how does, because this is, this is highly unusual, I would imagine. I mean, that I'm aware of, other Broadway shows are not consistently, the cast members are drunk, <laughs> um, but it could be true. Uh, so how, how did this come about? How so uh, I have a background as a software engineer and an accountant from Australia. And um, after doing that for about 15 years, I decided to um, quit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to do something uh, more uh, feel, yeah. <laughs> entertaining. So uh, I spent a year looking for ideas for theatre productions and then came across this uh, idea of doing drinking and Shakespeare. And fortunately, was introduced to David Hudson and his wife, Laurie, and uh, their friend, Beth Gardner. And they have a company called Three Day Hangover, which is appropriate. And uh, they create classic plays in bars. And I think it was just kind of a Perfect match, and uh, we started work on this show, Drunk Shakespeare. And then, so then, how do you put out the call of, hey, we're looking for Shakespearean actors, also drunks? <laughs> the kind of remarkable thing is we literally just put it on uh, on Playbill, which is the, the theater website, the casting call, uh, and we got close to 1,200 submissions the first time around. <laughs> so clearly, actors, uh, actors in New York were interested in drinking on stage, excited about the idea. Uh, Getting paid to drink <laughs> right. and perform every night. <laughs> yeah, and we hosted some auditions, and we saw probably about 250 people the first time around over the course of two or three days. Uh, and we saw some uh, really incredible auditions. We had uh, one girl chug an entire bottle of wine in front of us, and then do her. Yeah, that's uh, my question. Do they sh do they come to the rehearse to the audition drunk? Do they get drunk while they're there? <laughs> yeah, we are they we acting drunk? We didn't ask them to uh, <laughs> come to the audition drunk. Uh, we got a lot of people who did come in. They brought maybe drunken resumes, their history uh, as a, a drunken person. Uh, one, one girl, yeah, brought like her friend had written a resume, like a, a reference letter for her. A reference, a drunken yeah. reference. A drunk person. Like. No, I've find seen them my on LinkedIn. Drinking yeah. like many times. Wow. And she's, you know, a happy. 
drunk. We had many people bring us gifts of like small nip bottles of uh, of bourbon or, <laughs> or whatever, just try to like help uh, like, win them over. Yeah, bribery. Yeah, so, so it, it's quite fun. And and then you've got to direct drunkards at that point. Like, yes, you don't know kind of what kind, what kind of a drunk you're dealing with until you're in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we don't. So the the, the <laughs> rehearsal process is uh, is sober, um, which is uh, is fun. We spend a lot of time focusing on the Shakespeare and focusing on the comedy of it, really trying to get everybody uh, on the same page with how the story is going to be told. Um, and the amazing thing is, is that out of the now. Um, probably 25 to 30 people who have been in the company over the course of three and a half years, um, we've always had really fun, awesome people who have come in and have been great drunks. Um, so we've been very lucky in that uh, that regard. But it's 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 nice. We spend a lot of time just playing and having fun. Um, and then the first time they drink is in front of an audience, um, which is exciting <laughs> for everyone. And scary. Um, especially the audience. So they get to see some, some wild and crazy uh, choices that are made in the moment. So. so Lisa, on that note, like what is, what is the wildest thing, either, either that you've seen from a cast member or an audience member? Oh, well. So we sort of have a mantra among the society, which is that anything can happen. And that sort of comes from both the actors and the audience. We have had actors at one point, one actor issued a challenge to another actor, and when he lost the challenge, the drunk actor shaved his initials into his chest hair. Um, so it goes as crazy as that, but I think <laughs> what our during cast- During the show? During the during show, show, in front of an yeah. audience, absolutely. Anything Ocean can happen. Love you, gods and yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, our cast are amazing at taking something ridiculous that the audience brings into the room and just parlaying it into something awesome. And like any of the other shows, we get audience members who have cell phones go off during the show. And one of our actors heard a cell phone and ran over and answered it and then proceeded to do their entire monologue to this person. And then about 40 minutes later, the person that was on the phone shows up at our theater. <laughs> <laughs> They were so excited by what had happened that they came to watch the whole rest of the show. That's great. So, that was you, right? That, was that is yeah. solid marketing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so, person to person, door to door. You never yeah. know. Anything can happen. No. So. All right. And so for the actors, Caitlin, Mike, and Wit, what, um, like, how do you, what's your background? How do you prepare for a show like this? Um, years of drinking. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's that's totally inappropriate. Don't do that. It's bad for you. It's bad for your liver. Um, I went to school for acting, <laughs> and I took some like I did some classical training at school. Um, but then I also moved to the city and started doing comedy and improv and stuff. So it was kind of the perfect combination of things. Um, and yeah, I also do like alcohol, yeah. but not too much. I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, my, my background is uh, not... We do <laughs> alcohol. That's yeah. <laughs> so I, I described yeah. it like in 11th grade. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I've, I've been an improviser in New York since 2012. Um, that's pretty much my main training. I didn't go to acting school. I, I have an English degree, which I guess works for this show um, <laughs> in, in some ways. Um, but yeah, I, I, mostly improv, sketch comedy, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm. I uh, I come from the Shakespeare side of things. Uh, before before this show, this is the first like real comedy show I've ever been in. I did like every off off unpaid Shakespeare show under the sun. Um, a lot of them like one night performances, not rehearsed sort of thing. Um, so I, I came to the show more from that side. But it's been a it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun. You know. Three and a half years later. Yes. <laughs> What are, what what are your favorite Shakespeare plays? I mean, I it's completely hackney to say it, but Hamlet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cliche, one. but it's yeah, cliche it's my favorite reason. one. I just saw the one of, at the public with Oscar Isaac, and it was Yum. incredible. And Ke <laughs> Keegan Michael Key was the so my hot. favorite part, though. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, I'm a I'm a Twelfth Night guy. Love Twelfth Ooh. Night. Yeah. Well, it's well, it's 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 a really the great thing about Twelfth Night is there isn't a bad role in it. So regard, mm. like, just get if you're in the show, you're gonna have fun, and all of the characters are so distinct from one another, and they're all completely insane in opposing and fun ways. And like, I've I've never not enjoyed seeing Twelfth Night, which is which is I've really unenjoyed a lot of shows. So that's that's a good thing. Um, Shakespeare in Love. That's <laughs> that's. They have the Caitlin, best. They Caitlin, have the best sex scenes. I, I cannot. <laughs> Whatever. Or I like King Lear too. Oh. 
<laughs> Did you just give an uh for King Lear? <laughs> so that's what, yeah, for, if you're scoring this at home, thumbs up for Shakespeare in Love, eh, for King Lear. <laughs> it's impressive. And so is it Three Day Hangover has also produced Drunkle Vanya, which mm. was a Chekhov adaptation. Yes. Um, <laughs> Do you just start with the name and then work backwards? <laughs> I mean, that's the way to do it, I think. Uh, marketing 101 right there. Um, yeah, someone writing did. this down? <laughs> I think someone is. Yeah, good. Yeah, they're, they're actually this is are. so freaky. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Everything's being transcribed in the moment. <laughs> laughter. <laughs> laughter in parentheses. Hey, <laughs> just Morris for president. Right. Oh. No, it'll be freaky in a moment when it starts anticipating. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, we did uh, we did Drunk Ovania in uh, Off Broadway this past uh, winter uh, at the Russian Samovar on 52nd and 8th. Uh, we've also done a bunch of other shows. We did a, um, a boozy version of Dracula where we changed uh, the the famous vampire slayer Van Helsing to Van Yingling. Um, which was like a nice was always had a Yingling like yeah. on the. We did a a two person version of the Henry plays where we kind of mashed all of them together that culminated in the audience uh, doing a massive 150 cup game of beer pong, uh, just hurling beer pong balls at the at the middle middle of the room, which was very fun. Uh, and yeah, we got some some good ideas coming on the pipeline. We're thinking Wasted Williams or something, maybe, maybe like that, a little Tennessee Williams streetcar mm. drunk. Ooh, <laughs> some, some good stuff. So okay, yeah. fantastic. Someone say Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stella. Stella, yeah. like Stella, Stella, Stella for star, you know, yeah. there you go. All right, so, and and you perform this, how many how many times a week are you doing this? Because you're doing two shows So, yeah, we currently do uh, about seven or eight shows a week uh, over the summer, and then over winter, uh, in between Christmas and New Year, if you have family in town, come and see the show. We hey, do about Aaron. 15 shows in one week. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do. A, we have a two-show night on a Tuesday. So, all right. So, like, wait, let's break that down for a minute because if there's two shows a night, so somebody gets hammered in the first show, yeah. does that actor then get more hammered in the second show or does uh -huh. the second show just have more drunks? Uh, no, no, it's one person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. The idea being that it's better to have like one very, very flat tire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, then two. Flat tire. You like. You yeah. might as well just like let the wheel just like hit the rim on the road, and let it spark. At that point, <laughs> it's just easier to deal with. So really, do we say in the beginning what the show is? I'm just thinking people. Oh, God. <laughs> we, we have five actors. Four of them are sober, and one of them is drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we try and do a Shakespearean play in 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's the show. <laughs> that's, that's perfect encapsulation. Uh, yeah. Hence the flat tire joke. Yeah. yeah. So the so the second show is really the one you want to be at. Yeah. The 10 p.m. or well, the second show, the late show, is uh, is always a wild ride. There's yeah. a lot of crazy stuff that happens. Because not only uh, is the actor, you know, double drinking, uh -huh. but it, it's usually like a 10 o'clock show. So most of the audience has pre-gamed pre and showed up, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. well lubricated as well. Yeah. So they're, they're ready to party. It's just like uh, plastic sheets way. on the floor. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. So, and, and how... Do you, at this point, do you sort of have an, a sense of the other actors, like, ah, oh, I kind of know how Mike is when he's mm -hmm. a little uh, <laughs> sauce. It's actually your name. It's my name. <laughs> yeah. When he um, gets sauce. It's not a stage name either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, I feel like once you do a couple performances, you kind of know what kind of <laughs> drunk they are. Um, and sometimes that means, like, batting down the hatches, everyone's going to get weird. Um, sometimes it just means, like, watch your eardrums, because some people are, like, screamy drunk. I am kind of a screamy drunk. Yes, yes. you get Yes, you are. <laughs> um, so, sorry in advance talker. for this mic situation in the back. Good luck with levels. Do a lot. Um, <laughs> um, but generally, everyone's, like, really fun and just, like, down to clown and... Yeah. Does that mean sex? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes it does. Um, the, I said a that very the other specific day. Kind, I think. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. The thing, yeah, the, the, yeah. I think the shoes. And <laughs> <laughs> the thing about preparing for this show uh, is that, like, in a normal stage production, it's like this kind of very rigid world that you live in because you have to hit your marks so the lights can get you and you have to, you know, kind of do this very intense choreography on the stage to, like, kind of do the director's vision. But in our show, the, like, acceptable space of what is allowed in our room or in our show on a given night is, like, much, much broader. Uh, and so, like, the, the real uh, preparation for the show is just, like, having a really intense knowledge of the people you work with, uh, what they will be and will not be comfortable with doing, 
uh, uh, you know, who is it, like who is the audience in the room, what kind of jokes will they like, what, what kind of jokes will they not like. Uh, yeah, so it's more about like just kind of having a feel for the people you're working with on any given night. And in that, Lisa, do you ever have people that just show up like, I had no idea this is what I'd signed up for? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we definitely get people, who, some of whom have Shakespeare backgrounds, some of people are into improv, and some people just read the New York Times and heard about us in the New York Times. Um, so, yeah, the audience is very diverse, and we as a cast kind of, and, and ensemble talk throughout the show, like, these jokes are landing, these aren't, let's adjust. So it's an active, living process. So, yeah. All right, live theater. Caitlin, how are you feeling? I am just ready to sit on a couple laps. <laughs> I want that to be a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'm gonna, do you? I'm going to sit on, it's on, not. Boy, sit boy, on Shakespeare's boy. lap. Every sit on day, Shakespeare's guys. lap. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, think, I think his lap may be ready. Yeah, yeah. I think it is Let's always do ready. Let's do this. All right. All right. Well, Caitlin is sufficiently inebriated. Oh, really quick. Just add me on LinkedIn, please. Don't. Don't. No, it help. no it they don't own LinkedIn. Not I'm, the right room. I'm a professional. <laughs> it would right. help my situation. You think of other social networks. No, I can't All right. think of any. Strap in, nerds. <laughs> Hold on to your Chromebooks. Put on your Google Glass. And whatever you do, for God's sake, do not reply all to the company diversity memo. <laughs> we are the Drunk Shakespeare Society. And please enjoy this 15 minutes traffic of our stage. Three, two. What? Shakespeare. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. Ancient br <laughs> Where ancient grudge breaks to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands dirty. It's not. <laughs> From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Who misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death Bury the hatchet. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. So, start of the play. Capulet versus Montagues in a blood feud for as long as anyone can remember. This is a major rivalry, guys. We're talking about, like, white wine versus red wine drinkers. We're talking T-Swift fans be T-Swift haters. We're talking deplorables and snowflakes. You know what I'm saying? So there are fights breaking out in the streets. Indiscriminate thumb biting. Hashtag shit's going down. So now we know what's happening, right? Now we're going to introduce our players for tonight. Our title character, Romeo Montague. I, me. Sad hours seem long. That's so good. Thank That's you. played by Wit Leyenberger. Yeah. Okay, and much like Wit, Romeo was like that misfit theater kid with a, too many feelings. Yeah, I'm a 30 year old man <laughs> playing a 16 year old. What does that say about me? <laughs> You're useful. It's good, no wrinkle. Um, Juliet Capulet will be played by moi, and much like me, Juliet is super popular and really beautiful, and knows the <laughs> the perfect angle to take a good selfie. Also, maybe peaked in middle school. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> lastly, <laughs> playing. Play, play, Everyone else is Mike Shaws. Yeah. Super. So at the top of the play, my parents, the Capulets, are, are throwing this rager, right? And they're trying to get a head count, but everyone's replying interested to the Facebook event, so they have no idea what their numbers are. So they, they send out this messenger, right, to like relay all the information and invite people and get a head count, but he works for Equifax. So he actually, he actually not only shares the party information with literally everyone he sees on the street, he also shares home addresses, social security numbers, yeah. dates of birth. One of the people he shares information with is Romeo, who would never be invited because he's their mortal enemy. But Romeo hears about the party, he hears that his former love, Rosaline, is going to be there. Like I said, a lot of feelings. <laughs> to prepare yourself. Um, so he decides he has to go check it out. So he shows up to the party. You guys remember this part. He and Juliet spot each other through an aquarium. And the first thing he notices <laughs> is, is Juliet's enormous and perky set of angel wings. And um, so he, young and beautiful Leonardo DiCaprio launches into this love ballad, right, from the bow of a ship while she's frantically he's forging checks. And then he crawls into the carcass of a dead horse to keep him warm you, in the winter. I, and, you didn't see The Revenant, did you? <laughs> no, okay, that's clear. So okay. that's, no. Anyway, the point is they fall in love instantly, which sets like a super unhealthy standard for romance for the rest of time. <laughs> but, but they meet, right? And they dance bachata, and then they're separated. And then the next time we see them is the scene de la scenes. The famous, the most famous scene ever. What is it? Uh, when Alan Rickman falls off the Nakatomi. You're block. dead to me. No, no um. it's it's okay. It's Swayze, but it's the second time they're outside the roadhouse and it's the fight. He doesn't no, kill the guy. No, it is the balcony scene. Oh, that one's pretty good. Okay, let's make a balcony. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, my ginger ale down. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Jesus it's fine. Christ. Hey, hey, hey. It's all right. Can we get a clean up on aisle four? Thank you. <laughs> 
Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. That which we call a magnolia cupcake by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks, it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Well, be not her maid, her... <laughs> For she is envious. I'm so sorry, Wit. Yeah, hi. I'm so, hi. hi. You're doing so great. Am I? Um, yeah. But I just, I was thinking, like, you're a teenager, right, in this play? And, like, what we know about teenagers in love is that they're, like, they're always, like, searching for the version of themselves that the other person's going to be into, right? Okay. They're like, I'm malleable. Which kind of me do you like? Right. And so I think that you should do this monologue as a variety of options <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to suggest them as we go. So let's start in honor of my favorite show, Outlander. Start as a Scotsman. I'm going to imagine you in a kilt. <laughs> Three, two, one. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. How does the livery is but sick and green? And none but fool still wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. It is my love. That she knew she wore. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. I can't yeah, okay. understand a word that you're saying. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. How about instead of that, like, give me like a like a Downton Abbey kind of like stuffy British guy. Great, great. Uh, um, um, she speaks. Uh, yes, she says nothing. What of that? Um, She's not. Yes. Who's passing a stone? <laughs> Tis no <laughs> to me. She speaks, but to 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 <laughs> of the fair. Oh, ooh, ooh. The caliber of this bullet, it's too great for the rifle I bear. Calcium! <laughs> 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 okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. I've, I've decided I actually like I'm a little bit more homegrown. Yeah, so sure. can you give this to me like a Brooklynite who is like really mad about his Con Edison bill? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She speaks yet, she says nothing. Stand what is that? Oh, her right discourse says I will answer. Oh, nay. Tis not to me she speaks. No, what she does is she comes by, she estimates the amount of fucking money she wants to charge. <laughs> Think about it. Wake up, America! You're paying for a goddamn dream. What is an estimated value? Can someone tell me what a kilowatt hour is? I feel like this is the right room. I feel like okay. I gotta get an. Okay, okay I just gotta too much, really too much, in. too much, too much, too much. Um, how about let's finish this off as, ooh, as um, like a southern. Lawyer, okay. Um, who oh, who does all of his business out of the back of his Lincoln, <laughs> and his only client is Ryan, Ryan Felipe. Felipe. <laughs> yeah, I got the reference. I got okay. it. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> See how she leans her cheek upon her hand, does. that I wear a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. <laughs> Y'all want to buy a Lincoln? <laughs> <We're playing burger. laughs> Thank you. OK, so blah, 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 love and shit. Um, he was a boy, she was a girl. Can I make it any more obvious? No, uh, no, Brand. really, no. Children. Hold on. Children. They're actually children. They're like 14 years old, but they're convinced that they're in love with each other and that their feelings are real. We all remember that. Um, and so the second time they hang out, they decide they should get married, <laughs> which sounds like a 14th century TLC show. Um, so, <laughs> so they get secret married, and Juliet, guys, Juliet is ready for that two-step verification, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the nurse keeps coming in to interrupt them so they can't, you know, consummate the marriage. Um, 
so that's where we're at. And in the street, at the same time that all of this is happening, this fight breaks out with uh, Juliet's cousin, Tybalt. Now, Tybalt is like the, the short guy on the wrestling team who's way too aggressive. Yeah. Or, or like this unfathomably incompetent businessman with little baby hands who accidentally tripped into the Oval Office. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to give us that? Thank you so much. Good. I'm just going to clean up. <laughs> Romeo! Wait. <laughs> Romeo. Romeo! How did you see me? I was in incognito mode. <laughs> Whatever. I can only make that joke in this room. I had to try. The hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. You're a crooked liar. Sad. <laughs> Sad. Tybalt! The love I bear thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Crooked liar, are you, you still with me here, bud? I'm, I'm like one of those birds that dips in water, Got it. bounces back. Crooked liar am I none, therefore farewell, I see thou knowst me not. Boy. Don't assume my gender. <laughs> Boy. This shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. I'm going to make your insides great again. <laughs> I, I do protest. I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise till thou shalt know the reason for my love. And so, good Capulet, whose, whose name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Cool, cool. So this would be where Mercutio jumps in, and Mercutio right. is is uh, Romeo's ride or die. He's like gonna sacrifice himself uh, in honor of his best friend. He's like Fred Weasley or like the blind guy in Rogue One. Um, <laughs> so so, but we but turns out our Mercutio actually isn't here. Yeah. Yeah. She used that. Apple Maps to try to find this <laughs> location. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> No, so she's in Cupertino. Um, so she didn't make it. But, but we do need a Mercutio. Yeah, I and got that. I got that. actually, you find the I feel like you, sir, you with the blue, yeah. Mm -hmm. You look like you moisturize. Get up here. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much. What's your name? Chris. Chris, awesome. Chris, I have just two favors for you. The first, can you help me with my SEO? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's a no one SEO. He's in sales, found it. Okay. All right. And the second, I want you to play Mercutio. And all you have to do is just read off of, just come over here. Can you just, here, just take a seat right here, center stage, look at you. Oh my god, your facial hair is incredible. Um, so you're just going to read off of these cards, and then I'll instruct you as we go. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Shake. Shakespeare. I am hurt. Okay. Great, great, great. Next card, next card, yeah. next card. Ask me tomorrow, and you shall find me a great man. Oh, oh gosh. Gosh. <laughs> What a joke! Yeah. yeah. Keep going, keep going. Caitlin, I know we just met, but I work in tech and if you <laughs> Oh my god, stop not in front of all these people, we'll talk about it later. Stop it. He just really just the recording on both your houses. Okay, no, die. No, just gonna... Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Right there. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Yes! Yes! Oh no, stay right there! Oh god! Oh, I swear, I will avenge you here. I'm gonna take this ring to remember you by. I'm gonna take, just take, no, 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 that's mine now, you're dead. So you go, you're dead, go, okay, go be dead over there so though. Much. Go be dead, thank no, 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 no. no. Thank I, you for your I'm avenging you, this no, is very. Just give him back the ring, come on. That's worth more I'm than so your fucking savings. <laughs> thank you so much. Very true. Hero. Let's talk later. Tybalt! Take back that villain again, which late thou gavest me, for Mercutio's soul is but a little ways above our head, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I must go with him. Thou wretched boy, which did consort him here, shout with him hence. This shall determine that. Ooh, yeah. Here you go, Zagreus. It's so important. Oh, don't like, I liked it. Ha! Five, six, seven, eight.
been tip off of him. So we get the point, right? Tybalt is slain, and also my husband Mercutio. Actually, if, this is for you. Thank you for your service. Drink that after work. Don't be weird. Okay. <laughs> So everyone's dead. There's blood everywhere. It's like the red wedding up in here. Um, but Julia does not know any of this has happened because she is in her bedroom reading Fifty Shades of Grey, trying to figure out how her machinery works. <laughs> <sighs> Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaethon would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Come, civil night, thou thou sober-suited matron all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match. Played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. <laughs> come, gentle knight. Come, loving, black-browed knight. Bring me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and, and cut him out into little stars. Unas estrellas chiquitas. Lucirá tan hermoso el firmamento que el mundo enamorado de la noche dejará de adorar el pinche sol. Cálmate, güey. Ah, compré una casa del amor y aún no la habito. Estoy vendida, ¿sí? Y no me han gozado. Ay, coño, el día se me hace eterno. Como la noche antes de una fiesta para la niña que quiere estrenar un vestido y no puede. Aquí viene el nurse. That's, when you That's enter, my entrance right? line? Yeah, yeah, you know it. You sure. speak Espanol. Yeah. OK, so the nurse comes in, right? And what's important to note is that the role of the nurse is like the consummate character actor role, OK? So Mike, I think you should deliver it as the consummate character actor, Christopher Walken. Thank you so much. OK. <laughs> wow. Juliet, baby. <laughs> Tybalt is gone. Oh, no. Romeo is banished shed. <laughs> Romeo that killed him, he is banished shed. Pound sign, banned. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Boom, crazy. I, I can't make sense of anything you're saying because your syntax is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the moral of the story is that like Romeo has been banished shed from the, the area and he's super bummed about it. <laughs> banished shed equal than or greater than death. Hashtag angry, hashtag all caps, hashtag pray for Houston. Mmm, <laughs> 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 super. One of the great. Yeah. Just so, so Romeo finds out that he's about to be exiled, so he's like, before I go, before I go, I should see Juliet one last time. So he sneaks into Juliet's bedroom window so they can catch the last train to Bone Town. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, show me that dongle, baby. Ooh. <laughs> Let's suspend the disbelief and forget that we're 14 years old and all we know about this was taught to us by a gym teacher. Yeah, bring you ready it for this? in. Here we go. Simulated, Simulated sex, 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 and sex, sex. Wait, is that it? Ooh, yeah, that's it. That's life, baby. Okay. So needless to say, they do the deed. Juliet's parents are downstairs. They have no idea that Romeo is currently mining her back end for dirty data. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but because they have no idea about the relationship, they've already betrothed her to someone else, to one of Lord Capulet's golf buddies, Paris. And Paris is like... Paris is like the Verona equivalent of Paul Ryan, right? Like, he, he's, he's handsome enough, he's got a nice set of abs, but he has no spine. So, <laughs> so Juliet is not, a, she's not about that life. She's like, I just spent the best 14 seconds of my life. I'm 14 <laughs> years old, leave me alone. Well, a second for a year. Um, and she's not, she doesn't want to get into that, so she goes to the friar, right? Now, the friar is the lover's mutual drug dealer. He, think like Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. And he's always providing, you know, Romeo with grass, Juliet with oxy. Um, he's just generally way too involved. But Very he, dark. I know, it is a, it's a tragedy. <laughs> so he comes in, he's like, I got a plan. Hit it. Yo. God. Listen, Juliet, I got a perfect plan. You're going to take a potion, bitch. And then it's going to be like you're dead, but you're actually asleep. Science, bitch. <laughs> First of all, I am offended by the B word. Um, <laughs> second of all, with a plan like that, she's like, what could possibly go wrong? Turns out everything is the answer, everything. Because Romeo does not get the DM about the potion plan. 
Him. Oh, I should have trusted all of my, you know, data with just, just Google Drive. <laughs> Fuck Microsoft, Microsoft Office Suite, am I right? Yeah, that's what did it. No, so sorry. he doesn't know that she's just sleeping and is not actually dead. He shows up to the tomb, thinks she's really dead, freaks out, kills Paul Ryan, and then he stands over her lifeless body. Right. Let's, let's make a tomb. Yeah, a tomb. Why are oh, you tomb? I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, okay. that would make sense. Great, yeah. great, great. I'm just gonna get in my tomb pose. Hold on a second. I have to look pretty while I'm dead. Also, I have Spanx on, don't worry. Okay, thank you. Thanks. You good? Thank you. you yeah, good? I'm sleeping. Oh, my love, my wife. Death that have sucked the honey of thy lips hath had no power yet o'er thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Here will I remain. Here in this gaudy God auditorium with more collective wealth in the country of Liberia, here, <laughs> with worms that are your chambermaids, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes, look your last. <laughs> nice. I'm 14, be cool. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, oh you, the doors of breath. Seal which a, with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Oh, that must be the rigor mortis pucker <laughs> setting, and that's good, that's good. And, okay, here's to my... I did, I did not bring a potion with me for the... Oh, no, you don't have a potion? <laughs> <laughs> I like doing Green buddies. apple, thanks. <laughs> Go ahead. Here's to my love. Yeah. Chuck, 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 <laughs> What's this? A cup? Thank you. Closed in my true love's hand? Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, churl! Drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. Can I just get up for a sec? I'm dead. I'm just, but my legs I'm are... I'm a method act. My legs are going to sleep. Thank you. I will kiss thy lips. Happily some poison yet doth hang on them to make die with a restorative. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no! <laughs> really worth it, guys. It. Wow. <laughs> Thy lips taste of green apple. Yay, noise. Then I'll be quick. Yep, right there. Oh, happy dagger! This is my sheath. Thus, there rest and let me die. <laughs> Come, tears confound. Out, sword. And wound the pap of Pyramus. This is not Romeo and Juliet anymore. And shy that left pap where the heart doth hop. Oh, God. <laughs> Thus die I. Can I sit on your lap? Yeah, Thank you so much. Die, 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 die. It's so much more comfy to die like this. <laughs> <laughs> A glooming peace this morning with it brings. Now am I dead. And, oh, damn, damn. Now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. <laughs> Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Get out of here, moon. <laughs> Thus. I, I, the, I'm gonna die on you again. The oh, sun <laughs> for sorrow. Okay, no, I'm really dead. And all. <laughs> Is this comfy for you? Yeah. Are you dead yet? Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> for never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet <laughs> and her Romeo. <laughs> there we did it, ladies hey! and gentlemen. Hey! The fastest, hey, drunkest amazing. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Now, we're going to have a quick Q&A here in a second, but make sure you go to online, drunkshakespeare.com. Also, check us out at our hidden library at 43rd and 8th for a show. And please check us out on social media, at Drunk Shakes. And let's uh, bring up Henry and the gang. Henry and the gang! Henry and the gang! Go, go! Gonna... One more time for our cast, Mike, Caitlin, and Witt. Vinny! Oh. Not only incredibly entertaining and informative, Where do I sit? Right here. but probably okay. one of the greatest challenges our Thank transcriber you. has ever encountered. <laughs> Nailed it! My Nailed favorite it. was just Remember the parentheses, the part where they just gave up, speaks foreign language. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
America has no official language. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's true. All right. Um, we have questions. So angry. Oh, so many questions. <laughs> Hey there, uh, thank you for coming out, this is wonderful. Um, how do you decide which show you want to do each night, or each mm. show? Um, it's a secret, so yeah. uh, we don't actually say what the show is until after the first four shots of whiskey. To each other? Oh no, we, we know what's going we on. We know. <laughs> I like your shirt. <laughs> just, in case, just in case you ever forget where you're at, you know. It's kind of a thing we wear here. <laughs> <laughs> No one here pays for their own clothing. This is a caramel brownie. Great. Right. Other questions? You guys have great snacks. <laughs> Those are the hazelnut meringue from Laplace. Yeah, 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 so yeah. good. They're so good. They are all fleek, as the kids say. They're fleek, yeah. They are. <laughs> so, and then, now, this has got to be like... You, this is probably what you guys enjoy every night is that you've done this whole thing and you have this adrenaline and you have a drunk friend who's just <laughs> hanging out. Yeah. Um, What's up, Columbia? Yeah. <laughs> do you guys have after parties? And if so, what do you do with the flat tire? <laughs> I, <laughs> listen, I'm the transmission of that car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about cars, but that's, that's cool. important. Yeah. Um, we don't really, we don't really have. Uh, uh, we do cast outings, which, like much like an event like this, is about bringing everybody together, sharing a different experience than what we do on a day to day. We don't even like a cast party. Is usually like after you wrap, after you end the show, uh, and 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 our. <laughs> Our little independent show that could just keeps rambling onward. Uh, we do we do go out after the show. Uh, we went out. We went out last, last night. night. We went out last night. It was uh, it started out as fun drinks, and then as my Bengals started to suck and suck more, I, it was sad drinks. Sad drinking. A lot of sad drinking. A lot of uh, yeah yeah yeah. I'm so sorry. Also, the flat tire gets a car home at the end of the night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all about that Uber. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. Other, uh, and parents, please don't don't be shy. You're you're also welcome to the yeah. mic. Parents are so important. Let's just answer the first one. What? I'll just answer the first question from the parents right at the bat. Huge disappointments. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> no problem. Do you have a question? Yeah, yeah I have a question. Hi. Awesome show. Um, I wonder if you guys have ever heard of Shakespeare Improv from Chicago. Mm. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, they're my good. My favorite show. And you guys are now up there. <laughs> wow. Oh. Take that, the treasured up there. Take that. It's super fun. You guys are amazing. Do you guys ever like want to do a collaboration or anything? Mm. Um, I would. I mean, because I'm an improviser, like that's my main background. I saw them in Chicago uh, two months ago, and I was just blown away that anyone would have an hour and a half show with an intermission for improv. Um, and it was, it was, it was, it was by far one of the, one of the top improv things I've ever seen. I mean, I would die to do something with. If that. you guys can make that happen. Yeah. We're on it. We're on it. Do you so know we, any people? We officially Producer? <laughs> make it happen. This got one's got to make it happen. A Shakespeare off. A shakes off. Yeah. A shakes uh, off. Shake it off. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds dirty. Um, <laughs> this is where we're drawing the line on the show yeah. now? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I yeah we it. don't make dirty jokes here. Yeah. Come on. What's up, Vinny? <laughs> you know his name? Yeah, we're yeah. friends. Jesus. I died on him. I have to know his name. Come on. <laughs> Uh, and this is great now that we have you, you guys are going to live forever on, on YouTube. Oh, so, no. <laughs> oh. Well, it'll definitely be the first time any portion of our show has appeared on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma's so proud. <laughs> Which begs the question, how often do your parents come and see the show? And do you, like, if you know you've got oh. parents, like, do you want to especially be drunk or not be drunk that night? Yeah, my parents have my parents have come a lot. Yeah, I think maybe they're just checking in on me, <laughs> but they come quite. Oh my God, it's the same guy. <laughs> no, they, we actually all look the same. Yeah, yeah. Google share, Google share. Freaking me out, man. Wait, who also works here? Uh, this I'm not the same guy. Um, You're wearing the same shirt. I was wondering about the impersonations. Do you guys give each other the setups to do characters that you know each other can nail every time, or or are you really like? And can you well, answer that question in voices? Uh, Mike? Uh, Go ahead. What voices do you want? Well, uh, I mean, it kind of works that, like, we try a bunch of stuff, and some stuff works and some stuff doesn't. 
And so the next that time we here do too. it, <laughs> yeah, and then and the next time we do it, we will keep like most of the ones that worked and then try new ones for the ones that didn't work. And then over time, you just kind of learn. We always want to keep like a few uh, uh, wild cards just to like keep exploring and keep finding new material for the show. Yeah, but, uh, sometimes you just got to throw spaghetti at a wall. <laughs> All right. And, if, and whatever <laughs> sticks, that's what you keep. <laughs> It's my life philosophy. <laughs> Thank you, W. Thank you, W. They just... We also had one show where someone made all of us do my cocaine impression. Oh my god. <laughs> and that was Oracle. really bad. It was really, really spectacular. All I could say was Master Bruce, Master Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like <laughs> Master, Master, Oh Master Bruce. She was only 16. <laughs> She's only 16. <laughs> She's only She's 16, so Master Wayne. Yeah, we sort of made a rule that that bit was never allowed again. Yeah. Right oh, yeah, Google, that bit was so banned. <laughs> Forever in our hearts. One thing for posterity, that was it. Oh! Hi. 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 How you doing? Great. So, so great. good. Okay, so, good. so have you ever done a show with two people drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Not on Officially? <laughs> <laughs> Not officially. <laughs> there are certainly early on were several shows where the entire cast started drinking midway through the show, yeah. uh, which turned into crazy, crazy nights uh, of chaos. Uh, we try to do a good job now of limiting it because there's drinking. They're already drinking enough each week, so we, uh, we try to make sure that. And we want to you know, keep that single flat tire and not the whole car just like slow rolling down. On, the, uh, on, on fire on the side of the road, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever thought about like a, a matinee of just like hungover Shakespeare? Oh baby. Oh man, that that would be brutal. That would be <laughs> just coffee for everyone. Really, yeah. really just quiet. so angry. And lots All of the like bagels and fried eggs. We could do sunglasses. Titus that way, just scream the whole way through. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're actually about to launch a new show, which we haven't announced uh, yet, but we can announce <gasps> a again. Google exclusive. Yes, good good time. time as any. I'm excited. And you too. Um, we get a lot of requests from teachers. Um, <laughs> High school teachers <laughs> who think this is a uh, we really, really fun uh, introduction to requests. Shakespeare. Of course, we can't uh, bring all the drinking into the classroom as much as the teachers would like to. Um, but uh, so we're, we're launching a new show called Junk Shakespeare. And it's kind of like extreme food challenges meeting uh, Shakespeare. Uh, <laughs> Adam Richmond, watch out. With a lot of opportunity for uh, revenge from the performers. So this will be uh, for high school students, similar to the kind of thing that you're seeing today, but taking out the alcohol and replacing it with things like like a shot of uh, mustard. espresso with soy yeah. sauce. And yeah. mustard. Uh, Pickle juice. That was great. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, was super fun. Uh, while that. eating chilies. Pop uh, rocks and yeah. oh, barbecue yeah. sauce. We did that. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've been experimenting. We've been playing, yeah. <laughs> like, wow, that's... Um... <laughs> Do you need a minute, Henry? Just basically letting high schoolers dictate the show. Like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's, you know, high school is giving challenges, but it's also uh, the cast giving challenges to each other. Mm -hmm. So there will be challenges set up and then revenge challenges that come back throughout the show. <laughs> so there's like a whole meta arc to this theater company. <laughs> yes. You're drinking together, you're sort of like all over each other, and then what? the next day you're like challenge. <laughs> The dagger. Yeah. Oh, it's Pop my new rocking. hair accoutrement. <laughs> you guys should try it. It's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you very much. This has been absolutely one of the, uh, certainly one of the best Fridays we've had in a while. Um, actually, no, if you're a parent here, we, this is every Friday. This is normal. <laughs> this is, works as intended. Another big round of applause for the cast of Drunk States there. Caitlin wants to ask the audience. Yeah, now. Oh I have, yeah, that's I have that, totally. for all of you, in, involving my SEO situation. <laughs> anyway, I'm kidding. I'm, I have to pee. Okay. <laughs> I gotta go pee. Caitlin Morris, ladies and gentlemen. She's a peach. All right. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing more from you guys and. Uh, yeah, come back again. We have nine cafes, so there's all sorts of weird food challenges you can make here. Bring it back. We um, cool. we we come up with some weird dishes. So. Cool. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. for having us. All right. Cheers. Thank you.